Hello, everyone. My name is Dara. This is Dear Hallmark. This is a space where I nerd and geek out over all things Hallmark Channel movies, TV shows, and stuff. And the guest that we have in the home of Dear Hallmark today, do you guys remember when Cousin Andrew and I, we were talking about my Christmas family tree, and there was this barista guy who looked vaguely familiar, but we couldn't place him. Well, I found him, and come to find out, he did other Hallmark movies. You may know him as Jamie from An Unexpected Christmas, maybe Owen from Winter and Vale, or there's this movie I don't think anyone's seen called It Was Always You, where he played David. Um, guys, ladies, friends, gents, pets, and all of the rest of Noah's Ark, please welcome Tyler Hines. How are you doing, sir? You're so good at this. <laughs> My goodness, you're good at this. You're so good at this. You're so fun to watch. Thank you. <laughs> It's so great. Thank I feel you. like I'm. I feel like I'm. I'm inside of something that I've. I've witnessed, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. Oh, thank you. That's super kind. How are you today? I'm good. I'm really good. I'm just hanging out here with Rusty and uh, trying to eat some food. We got a day of interviews, so yeah. I think the smoothie will probably turn into a whiskey at some point. And uh oh. <laughs> Where we got a green smoothie we got going on there? Trying to be healthy. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. That's all the good things. Yeah. To balance all the bad things. Where, speaking of which, so at Dear Hallmark, I have this saying where it's like, come on in, take your shoes off, hang your coat up. There's a place at the dining table with your name on it. So I want to know, Tyler, just to kind of open it up with a, a fun question, what would be on your plate at the Dear Hallmark dining table? What would you be eating on? What would I be eating on? Um, a smoothie, probably. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> probably I eat a lot I, I yeah. consume a lot of calories in my day so yeah probably be a, a nice hefty meal with all of the good things potatoes salad yes asparagus yes smoothie Word. whiskey just consume it all, all at once all at once I'm yeah. really digging key lime pie right now I would have oh, a yeah. big old slice of key lime pie as an appetizer and then go into oh. my to my entree <laughs> that's a good way to do it switch it around yes Yes. Like so that. let's talk a little bit about your acting background. How did yeah. you get into acting? Like, what was that moment where you said, yo, this is, this is what I want to do, like, with my life? Um, I don't think I had that exact thought until later on. Like, mm, I started when okay. I was, when I was really young. And I found my way into it uh, simply because my parents had a discount at, like, a theater place. And they wanted to get rid of me because uh, <laughs> I'm sure I was not fun to be around. And uh, so I was there for a bit. And uh, it was at that thing, I guess it was like a, a few week summer camp or whatever you would call it, that I fell in love for the first time with another young lady that was there. And, uh, and uh, I ended up doing a play with that theater company for like eight months or whatever it was and mm -hmm. I we got paid some money and and I made some people cry in the audience and this was entertaining to me for whatever reason and I sort of kept doing it and it wasn't until later on that I sort of had realized that you know I was a fan of cinema and filmmaking yeah. and these kinds of things and and yeah. sort of came to a crossroads where I was like is this something that I actually want to do and that lasted a few years when I kind of debated about it and uh and it turns out, yeah, like I still find myself just like consuming movies like nobody's business. Like I just love, I just love them. Yeah. And I can tell your Insta stories are like cinematic shots. It's crazy. Like, and because you're not just an actor, you're also a writer, a producer and a director. So can you talk a little bit about how you, what the process was like getting into those other areas of film? I remember when I was like 13, I was doing this TV show and we had this director and I was one of the regular people on the show with a bunch of other regular people. And, uh, and uh, one director laid into me one day because he couldn't lay into the other actors because they were more successful and famous than I was. <laughs> so he chose me to, to get all of his frustration out and all the other actors sort of did not let that happen. They got very upset about this idea and uh, they were very protective of me on that set the other producers were as well and people started talking even at that age at 13 which is insane 
yeah um about like you know because i was i was paying attention so much throughout the process they were like you know maybe you could direct one of these episodes maybe you can do this which is an insane thought i was 13 wow, years old yeah um and probably entirely unrealistic and i'm sure they didn't mean it <laughs> but that idea got at least planted in my mind that like oh yeah i suppose you know if if i'm so fascinated about how all this takes place and all the people who are contributing in their various ways to to what we do throughout our day i, I was always asking questions and, and learning from them. Uh, so I think that idea got planted there. And then as I got older, I, I kind of went like the Spike Jones way where I was filming a lot of skateboarding with my friends. Mm -hmm. And this turned into editing things and finding moments even between stupid moments between friends of mine. And, and I sort of started doing that. And then it eventually found its way into like more so what I do as a profession. Yeah. Do you find no. one more creatively challenging than the other? Um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, probably because I started doing this when I was young as an actor, that seems a little more uh, simple than directing and producing. Directing and producing is incredibly, uh, can be incredibly painful and challenging. Like it's, it's, there's a oh, lot wait. of logistics. Okay. Well, so there's a lot of logistics involved, right? It's like as mm -hmm. actors, we're sort of in this cocoon where our contribution is in very specific and it's mm -hmm. sort of very focused. And obviously there's challenges that aren't just acting when you're acting, you know, trying to do something while managing other people's feelings or or doing it in environments that are not really conducive to maybe what you might be doing in that moment. But those are kind of pale in comparison to what you're challenged as a director and a producer, in my opinion. I think those mm -hmm. guys have a very real job. Um, and I think as actors, like, because we, because our emotions and our, what we're doing has to do with our faces and our bodies and our moods, um, it can be self-indulgent in that way where you mm -hmm. can, you know, you can be accommodated as an actor, how you're feeling that day. And as a director and a producer, it's like, no, no, no. If you don't do this, we don't have a day. Right. If you don't figure okay. this out, we're done for the day. And like, these are our real problems as opposed to these sort of minor actor things that we <laughs> face throughout our days, you know? Do you find that when you're in one role, like, let's say if you're acting, the director in you starts to rise up and you start uh, wanting to change things about how you're acting. Do you find that as you're in one role, another role can affect how you're performing in that role? Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and yeah, I mean, because on both sides, as a director and as an actor, depending on what role I'm in, because I've been on both sides of that equation, I try to be the person that I wished the person opposite mm. uh, of me would be. So if I'm acting, okay. I try to be an actor that's accommodating to a director. And, yeah. and um, I try to be very cognizant of the fact that, you know, this person has their job and their creative vision and their um, instincts, and those should be supported and, uh, and contributed to. Um, and then as a director, you have to be very respectful of an actor because what they're doing, it's kind of like swan diving through a pinhole acting. It's like, mm. there's a million different ways it can kind of go wrong and you have to kind of focus to get to a very specific thing and everybody kind of does it in different ways. And so you have to give people room to have their own voice and go about it in a way that may be different than yours, but still also pay attention and find ways to support that other side of the equation as much as you can. So I think the fact that I do both is an asset. And I think other directors that have worked with me, um, the ones that I've become close to, which is quite a bit, even in these Hallmark movies, uh, mm -hmm. I think they appreciate the fact that I'm malleable. A lot of the times I know what they're up against and I'm going, hey man, don't worry, like point right. with your hands to the part of the room that I can act. And I'm gonna go figure out how to act this scene over there because we have a limited amount of time, a limited amount of light, and this is how we're going to get through our day. And I can, I can do that very easily. It's not hard for me. I don't find it 
stagnating as an actor. I just, it's, it's all, uh, it's more mechanics for me, these things. It's, it's less mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know. It's less magic. It's more like, how do I help you do what you need to do? And then also be able to do what I need to do so that everybody gets what they want, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of Hallmark movies, the first yeah. one that I ever saw you in was on the 12th day of Christmas in 2020. Okay. And I was yeah. like, well, who is this surprisingly refreshing jerk on my screen? Like, I just really <laughs> enjoyed your performance in that movie. And yeah. then um, the one I watched after that was Winter and Veil, vale, which is per my personal favorite. Um, oh yeah, of yours. Yeah, I the location. I between seeing you in Winter and Veil, vale, I'm I'm sorry, seeing you in a Twelfth Date, and then seeing you in Winter and Veil, vale, I felt like we saw a more softer, like affectionate side um, of yeah. you, like with that character. And so I was like, oh my gosh, look at him being like not a jerk in this. And then, <laughs> and then. Yeah. I saw uh, it was always you. And I said, mm. oh, he just went on a rocket ship to the moon in this one. And <laughs> I wasn't prepared. <laughs> so can you talk about like with the different roles that you play, how do, do you bring a little bit of yourself to every role? Like how, how does that work when you approach these different roles for the Hallmark movies? That's very sweet of you to say all that. Thank you very much. I'm glad that you, you, I, I'm glad that you went on that journey of like, <laughs> oh, this guy affects me this way, and oh, this guy affects me this way now. And then it was always you. Seems to just tickle everybody in 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 a way. It's a, dude, it's a I honestly little movie. like. I refuse to believe that you actually acted in that movie. Like, I feel like you just <laughs> walked on there, looked at the lines you had to say, and was just 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 yourself. But um, I, I want to hear from you. Like, do you bring a certain element of yourself to every role, which which grounds it and brings some authenticity to it? You know, it's funny. I guess you hear a lot of actors say that. Like, I always bring myself to the role. I really don't think of it in terms like that. I don't think that ever really crosses my mind. I mm. always just I just look at the strike zone and try to find what's valuable about this particular thing. Like. With 12 mm. dates, I, I look at the movie and I go, okay, so we're going on a scavenger hunt and she's going to look at me and I'm going to look at her and we're going to, you know, be in love and do all those <laughs> things as we normally right. do. But like, what's interesting about this movie in particular with the specific elements that we have here? And to me, it was being a guy who is sort of representative of, of someone that I'm sure, hopefully that you've met or other people, I mean, not hopefully, but I'm sure you have. Uh, gentlemen who are putting their foot in their mouths or, or seeming a little too um, overzealous in their opinions on things and not leaving room for somebody else to really be themselves in a work environment, let's say, and but have them be somebody who's making that mistake, um, as people do, but his heart is inevitably in the right place and he's making the mistake for reasons that are not uh, malicious and to see you know, that person then be somebody else that you might empathize with. And I think that's an interesting thing. I feel like that could be cathartic for a, a woman or somebody who's mm. been in that position that Mallory was in and is like, man, forget this guy. And then like, <laughs> okay, I mm -hmm. see where he's coming from. And uh, that's a mistake. We'll give him a pass, you know, once we put him in his place. And, and then that's a, that's a story in itself. And I think that's something to be valued and to focus on and, and not shy away from. And then, and then what was the one afterwards that you saw? It was- uh, Winter and Veil. Vale. It was Winter and Veil. Vale. So Winter and mm. Veil vale was like, I remember talking to somebody <laughs> about this movie and they're like, uh, just be really good looking in it. Just be really <laughs> attractive. I was like, you know, that's not a bad approach. You know, if you're gonna do anything then maybe just really try to be good looking and, and do that. But you know, like for, for that movie, it was a different thing. It happened kind of on set where I saw Terry Ingram, who's a phenomenal individual, the director of that movie. And Lacey yeah. is like the most sincere person ever. And so for me, that movie became, my approach to it became very simple. Once I met Lacey and once I met mm -hmm. Terry, I was like, oh, like this, let's just have some fun. And we'll obviously do the work and find the beats and play the things, but yeah. Every time I'm across from Lacey, I just go, just shut up and just be sincere. Look how sincere she is. Just don't, don't do that. 
just right. just just join just join her in her like true sincerity it's just it, there's something infectious about it and so mm -hmm. once you see that you all of a sudden know kind of where your part is to lend itself and if you lean into it then it can hopefully bring forward what's special about that movie and then it was always you as just you know it was a that was a very specific thing and i think it was always you as a challenge because the subject matter was so titillating and so right. naughty and it could have really gone the wrong way right. that i really applied myself on that one i was going okay like i gotta figure this out and luckily i had aaron who is incredibly talented yes. and it, just an incredible human being so those two things together make it possible to when you are focusing to have that focus be rewarded with scenes that feel organic like you're saying or feel like they're they're doing something you know right. a lot of these times some of these movies you just feel like you're standing there staring at this other person mm. with no real path that you're going on mm -hmm. but finding those paths and finding the what's important about each scene is is, is a lot of the battle and and having Aaron in that regard was was a gift and so you know that becomes part of it it's like how do we tell the story and and not do it the wrong way but take that danger of what this story is of, of it was always you and a guy stealing his brother's fiance which is <laughs> so gnarly um and and tell it in an honest way where if you were to see that story or experience that story which some people have talked to me about it saying like this is my life you know i mm. i ended up with my siblings my my husband's sibling after we oh, sort wow. of parted ways and and it, and it happened in a non naughty kind of way um so those stories exist and and i think that we hopefully told that uh somewhat effectively y'all knocked it out of the park home run derby for sure it was so I, I feel like I just got tired from my own answer. I spoke for so long, Dara. <laughs> no. I feel like I'm winded. I need to take No, minute. this is That's good. This is good because I know you probably hear it like a skillion times, but I just wanted to tell you a skillion and one that I I really enjoyed. It was always you. Um, so let's cha-cha slide into this new movie that you have coming out on Hallmark mm. Movies and Mysteries, which, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, is your first venture into that network, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know um, a ton about what exactly that means, but I guess we'll find out when, well, when it from premieres. A, from a viewer's perspective, it seems like Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, are they're, they're more dramatic in their storytelling. Yeah. Like, there's not a lot of like light fluffy cotton candy rainbow skittles going on it's more so yeah. like there's like for instance there was another movie that just aired called the presence of love and it dealt with anxiety and dyslexia so it yeah. it, it tackles some some um some more hardcore themes than like the hallmark channel movies would tackle and do you find yourself like migrating over to that channel like do you bounce between both of them um uh, so how can i how can i say this? um originally i was like Hallmark Channel or Bust. And then I started watching the mysteries. And yeah. I didn't think I would like them because I'm such a sap. So I thought I would be scared of them, but they actually do intrigue, suspense, and murder mystery really well. And okay. I just kind of like drowned in all the mysteries over there. And so when they started doing their more dramatic storytelling with their movies, I think last fall they they did that. Um, yeah. And I saw a couple of them. I was like, just take all my money. I'm here. Like, I'm <laughs> I'm committed. And yeah. so they've been doing that more often uh, this year. Uh, your movie yeah. will be the third one that we get uh, this year. Okay. But also the fourth or fifth Italian one we've gotten already this year. Oh, really? On that yes. channel? Yeah. Well, on, um, and on Hallmark, like in general, we okay. got about... Okay three and like a half because the first wedding veil was like italian adjacent but i still put it in there right. um right. but i'm just thinking homework has an autumn's back in italy like right. she went to italy and now she's right. doing an italian restaurant and they just announced another Hallmark Movies and Mystery movie um, from the Mahogany line, which I'm really excited about that, but it yes. takes place in Italy. So I'm oh, just really? like, yes, I'm like, there's an agenda, but I'm here for it because I love, <laughs> yeah. I love Italian food. I love Italy. Someone's so. Italian over there. Yeah. Yes. But can you talk a little bit about uh, the movie that we kind of don't get in the synopsis? Because from what we can tell, Autumn's 
Autumn Weiser's husband, or her character, I should say, her husband uh, passes away. And so she's trying to continue his legacy with the restaurant and you're a restaurant consultant who comes right. in and kind of try, is trying to guide her with how to revive her restaurant. Am I accurate in that kind of? You're exactly accurate, okay. beautifully put, well done. If I would have done that, I would have failed. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's it, right? It's, it's, a, it's to me, the, the it's like sort of for this movie, for me, the reason to make this movie is, is to hopefully, um, it's two things as far as I'm concerned when, when I read it and, and uh, decided to do it. Um, one was hopefully an acknowledgement or um, a bit of a, I hate saying this phrase, but love letter to, um, to uh, everybody in the hospital. I don't love letters. It's such a <laughs> dramatic thing to say. Like when people say like, like, this is a real tour de force. I'm always like, this, this is a really dramatic statement. And it sounds very fancy. And I'm not sure that it's warranted. But either way, I hope that this movie um, at least is something enjoyable for, for people who are in the hospitality industry. Hopefully, yeah. it takes some time to acknowledge the, the struggle that that is to, to run a restaurant. Obviously, in the last two years, it's been a very specific circumstance where people in that industry have really, really uh, taken a hit and, and have had to fight for their livelihoods. And I think this movie's about that. So. You know, I, I personally dedicated what I wanted to do in this movie to those people. So anybody out there who's in that industry, I hope that you enjoy it and, and uh, know that I was thinking of you through the entire process of making it. Um, and then the second thing that this movie is about is, is, is about letting go and, and moving on in the right way. Um, because like you said, Autumn's character uh, lost her husband. Uh, it's it's just it's about that so anybody who's sort of lost somebody or, or have had to move on in their life from from something that was heartbreaking or or difficult um this movie is is sort of for you and, and about that so that's that's the two beautiful things about this movie for me that i wanted to focus on in making it so hopefully um that comes across and it's enjoyable to folks it's also not just incredibly sad but it's it's a little sad <laughs> a little sad. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, the chemistry that you developed with Autumn? Because that's something that was a theme on Instagram for me. Like I would go live sometimes and kind of put people's brain about what they thought as viewers contrib makes good chemistry on the yeah. camera. But as someone who's behind the camera, um, what do you think contributes to good chemistry between two leads? And what did that look like for you and Autumn to develop that chemistry? Because you guys have such short shoot times. Yes. Um, yeah, this idea of chemistry, again, is kind of one of those words that I find, I know why it's there and I know why people use it, but I, I, I find it almost like a misrepresentation for me in my experience. Mm. To, to me, what makes good chemistry is somebody who's just good at their job. Again, mm. like these movies, we're not like making Blue Valentine, you know what I mean? <laughs> Where we're just like, you know, living in a house for two weeks prior to shooting to get some like authentic, je right. ne sais quoi type performance from this right. thing. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's we're, we're trying to do something in a very specific amount of time in a specific way. And so someone who's just talented and, and good, you'll figure it out together. You know what I mean? And it's about building moments within this, these movies and trying to find things that are interesting about it and let those come to the surface and the focus of the movie and, and try to steer away from the things that are, are maybe not so uh, fantastic. And um, so to me, that it just comes down to that. And Autumn is that, you know, Autumn's very, very talented and she's a very skilled um, actor. And, and when somebody is a nice human being as well, this is icing on the cake, you know, this is... Yeah. This is this allows for more creativity because you can have open conversations and you can approach your day in a way that's that's creative and efficient to, to be able to actually make these moments that we get excited about and then hopefully will translate into the movie and, and hopefully the audience get excited about. So she's Autumn's very sweet and very talented and, and um, lovely. And, and so, yeah, we're, I was lucky most certainly in this regard. And it's, you know, like you said, somewhat of a more serious subject matter. So yeah, um, nice that it's, it's somebody who's, who's that talented behind it. 
And with this being Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, did you find yourself bringing anything different to your character as you would have with the, your Hallmark Channel characters? Um, yeah, I did feel like the tone of it because of what it was in its premise, um, yeah, lent itself for a bit of a different approach. But again, similar, because this whole genre that we were in at Hallmark, it's, we're trying to do a very specific thing, I, I think, mm -hmm. which is try to find beautiful things and authentic moments and tell stories that resonate and feel genuine and sincere. Um, but also have it be a very safe environment for someone to visit and not um, end up on a puddle on the ground. Um, and so uh, with this one, it was a little different. Uh, I got a link to watch the movie the other day. Mm. Um, my mom has access to my email, so she watched it too. And she, uh, <laughs> she always gives me her review. Um, and so she called me crying afterwards. So I, I guess it, uh, oh. It worked in some regard. She was, she was not because I was a terrible actor. That's <laughs> happened before, but just crying because it was sad <laughs> um, <laughs> and effective. So, so hopefully it worked. Yeah, oh, it was it was being able to approach it, yeah, being able to approach it differently was was fun. I, I also had somebody um, very, very close to me who I love dearly, um, and their family pass away when we were making this movie. Oh, I'm sorry. And specifically, I found out it's okay. Um, I uh, found out the day we were shooting kind of the final scene, like the, oh, wow. you know, not the final, final scene, but the right. final scene where, every, you know, the actors tell each other everything and then their mouths somehow meet um, this scene. So I, I found out that night and uh, it was an interesting evening and mm. um, it was interesting to see how that scene turned out. It was my favorite scene mm. uh, to shoot and to watch. Um, which was nice because it's nice to see that even in the most precarious of situations, you can still manage to to do the work, which is which is um, comforting as an actor. Because sometimes you end up you going like, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this day. Yeah. And then and then you do. But yeah, it was it was an interesting thing because you know we're making this movie about loss and and yeah. learning how to move on, and this thing happens, which is very uh, similar to the subject matter that we're talking about. So wild it was a wild shoot and then i got a concussion like what the, 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 the <laughs> second last day or something and i remember shooting those scenes and watching them going oh wow like okay you can't tell but i'm fully concussed just like checked out and it's, wow it's, it, was, it was an interesting shoot yeah it was fun wow well i'm glad you're doing better and yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm glad it's over and... no more sad subject matter and concussions great <laughs> Well, no, so green drinks first, and Dara for now on. <laughs> so I want to thank you so much for coming into the home of Dear Hallmark. It's been a pleasure having you here yes. before you go. I mm -hmm. want to ask you if there's anything you want to say to the listeners or watchers, whether it's about the movie, it's it's just your your time to just say anything that you want to leave them with. Um, yeah, I want to say, well, I think we touched on again, like for me, this, this movie is dedicated to everybody in the hospitality industry. I hope that's very clear, but we spoke about that. I want to make it clear to you and the audience how much of a gem you are. The vibe that you bring, and I hope that more people find your channel and, and find this outlet that you've created because you have such a vibe to you. You are so much fun. You are so charismatic and i don't use that word because i think it's a silly word like chemistry but you have that you deserve that word like you have Thank so you. much charisma you're so funny you're so fun to watch and to watch you play with these movies in the way that you do with these outlets is super fun if you remember the first time i posted uh something of yours this is i meant every word of that i saw it and i'm i'm going all hail this woman this is too much fun she's having and i am so grateful that i'm somehow part of it so that's what i would like the audience to know that i feel that way about you and i want you to know that too because truly it's it's like uh it's like uh it's like a fan moment me being here with you on your show oh, i can't wow. wait to watch it come out thank you so much i really appreciate that oh man oh you got this brown girl blushing oh snap okay <laughs> 
<laughs> well, everyone, he's Tyler. I'm Dara, and this is Dear Hallmark. I will talk to you guys in the next episode.